So he performed this as part of the Oxford Science Festival uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it was so good that I basically want to record it for uh, YouTube, which is why I've asked him to do it again. And also, this is hopefully even more of your audience with all the mathematicians, so you know, the jokes will land even better than last time. Uh, so, can we give a huge round of applause, a huge welcome to Joshua, please? <laughs> That's a really clever joke, by the way. <laughs> right, I hope you've all revised. We've got a lot to get through. The other day, I ran a statistical experiment. I sent 10 people into a shop, which only sold meal deals. Each customer had exactly a 50% chance of leaving the shop without buying anything. I repeated the experiment 100 times. Here are the results. It's a buy no meal distribution. <laughs> and that is the best joke. It's all downhill from here. <laughs> what do you call a parrot who can eat, who can't eat, but can still function? Polynomial. Probably should have seen that one coming. Why did the mathematician's ex leave them? Because they kept telling it to F off. F of X. They're not all going to be easy. <laughs> you have to work for some of them. Some people say they don't like complex numbers. But I, for root of minus one, think they're great. Now, I want to talk to you briefly about a part of math called graph theory. It might not be the kind of graph that you're used to with two axes and a function. This graph looks a bit more like this. So we've got lines which we call edges. Yes, this is the edgy part of maths. <laughs> and points which we call nodes. And there's a problem in graph theory known as the friendship problem. The idea being that points can represent people and lines can represent the friendships between those people. It states the following. Prove that if G is a finite graph in which any two vertices have precisely one common neighbor, then there's a vertex which is adjacent to all other vertices. Slips off the tongue. <laughs> Of course, the real friendship problem is, if you study graph theory, how do you make any friends? <laughs> Last year in my degree, I had to choose which options I wanted to take. I decided to go for a module called representation theory. I thought that would be easy, because there's hardly any representation in maths. <laughs> yes, I, I do political jokes as well. So that's the end of the political section. During representation theory, I came up across a result known as Shaw's Lemma, named after a mathematician called Shaw. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that's a brilliant name to have as a mathematician. Just imagine the arrogance with which he could lie to his colleagues. <laughs> I've solved the Riemann hypothesis. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I want to talk to you briefly about a mathematician called Joseph Fourier. Now, he was a French mathematician who pioneered an area of maths called Fourier series. He worked on it for a year. Anyway, that's enough of him. Um, I want to talk to you about a physicist called Michael Faraday. Some of you can see where I'm going with this. <laughs> now, he, he developed um, uh, the field of electromagnetism in physics. It didn't take him as long as Fourier. He worked on it for a day. <laughs> That's enough of him. Um, I want to talk to you about um, a mathematician called Pierre de Fermat, famous for his so-called Fermat's last theorem. He supposedly had a proof of this theorem, but the margin was too small to contain it. I suspect this was nonsense, and he just made it up. Fermat, aerial gain. Moving swiftly on. <laughs> Who likes average jokes? No need to be mean. <laughs> the mean, of course, is calculated by taking the sum of your data points. That, that symbol just means add up all your data points xi, and you divide by n the total number of points. Of course, the letter x is arbitrary. I personally prefer to use yi, but then people think I'm from Newcastle.
this joke is the mode. So why, why is it that musicians are so good at interpreting exponential data? Because they know how to log a rhythm? <laughs> Did you hear of the tragic tale of the computer scientist who got trapped inside their own code? Devastating. They were in bits. <laughs> What's the funniest number? 101, lol. <laughs> <laughs> Maths exam questions where you have to draw your own diagram. They're getting really out of hand these days. I mean, where do you draw the line? I, I was actually doing a problem the other day that I personally think asked a bit too much of me. I solved equation after equation, pages and pages of working. And then I finally had an answer staring at me from the calculator. And then the question said, please give, please give your answer to three significant figures. I thought, come on, more work? Anyway, so I went to the post office and I mailed my solution to the Queen, the Prime Minister, and the President <laughs> of the United States. <laughs> Try finding three figures more significant than those. Uh, a lot of you may know Tom from Tom Rock's Maths. He does a lot of um, maths outreach, and he's quite well known for all his mathematical tattoos. What a lot of you might not know is that one time he actually fell out with us tattoo artist. Yeah, it wasn't pretty. They actually got into a physical fight. They really did a number on Tom's arm. <laughs> Luckily, that's exactly what Tom wanted them to do, really playing into his hands there. When I was revising for my maths GCSE exams, I had to learn all those, remember the trigonometric identities? Sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. There was this big, long list. What I would do is I would put each identity on a post-it note. And I'd put the post-it notes on my wall, and that way I would memorize them. And then one day I came home from school, and some of them were gone. I was horrified. Naturally, I phoned the police. Well, of course I did. Identity theft is a very serious crime. <laughs> Have some respect. I was speaking to a mathematical biologist who claimed that the human body can survive without all of its organs. As a mathematician, I demanded proof. Apparently, the proof was in the appendix. <laughs> the, the breadth of knowledge in the room is astounding. <laughs> this joke is the mode. Well done. You're all really clever. If P implies Q, then you're probably waiting outside the ladies. <laughs> if Q implies P, please guess out the Q. Um, just, just an aside before this joke, all you need to know is that Cauchy was a mathematician. So I was hitting it off with this French mathematician. Things were going really well. It was getting late. She was like, voulez-vous Cauchy avec moi? I was like, oui. So we went back to hers and did some contour integrals. <laughs> we had a great night. Um, French mathematicians are wondering why we've devoted a whole field to the study of the number seven. Set theory. <laughs> Bit of culture. Um, now, people say that French is the language of love. I disagree. I think it's maths. And I've been testing this hypothesis on Tinder. Here's an excerpt of a conversation I had. I opened up with a classic. I work out, like equations and stuff. <laughs> no reply. <I> was... <laughs> oh, it's not that funny. I was... <laughs> I was like, wanna see my abs? Whoa, look at that. <laughs> All right, stop ogling. OK, go on a bit more. <laughs> so well defined. Still no reply. Um, I knew I had to get her attention quick, so I went in with, the cock curve has an infinite length. <laughs> now, I can see some of you looking at me thinking, that's crass. 
disgusting and frankly physically impossible. Well, get your minds out the gutter. It's a direct quote from Wikipedia about the cock snowflake, the famous fractal in maths. Still no reply. Um, and then a year later, I was feeling a bit lonely. I thought maybe she was a graph theorist. You never know. She blocked me. What's the statistician's favorite sandwich? Correlation chicken. <laughs> Two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen. All prime examples. <laughs> You're so clever. Why are Catholics so bad at physics? Every time they're asked to find the center of mass, they go to church. I know, what are they like? <laughs> Division algorithm. Step one, open your eyes. Step two, congratulations, you now have vision. I'm sure a lot of you remember um, the bus stop method for long division from school. Uh, for those of you who can't remember, I'll just jog your memory. So what you do is you take the number you want to divide. You take the number you want to divide by. And you go to the nearest bus stop and see if anyone there knows the answer. I actually tried this the other day. None of them knew. Really pissed me off. <laughs> anyway, I got on the bus. I thought, hang on, where are we going? Then I realized I'd only gone and got on the wrong bus. <laughs> wrong bus. Texts are gone, said Mario when the curse had finally been lifted. <laughs> nice to see some fans of hexagon-based Mario jokes in. <laughs> that one was just for you. I assume most of you have done calculus. I'm getting some, peop some of the non-maths people looking at me, thinking, calculus? More like cal clueless. Yeah. And, well, <laughs> Well done for thinking that, because that's a really clever joke. No, I'm just kidding. It's an awful one. I'm glad, I didn't, I'm glad I didn't come up with it. I was going to write a joke about differentiation, but I thought it would be too derivative. Now, mathematicians love differentiation, because if you give us a function, we can differentiate it. If you give a mathematician any function, we know how to find the derivative. The same can't be said of integration. It's a lot harder. I'll, gi I'll give you an example. So mathematicians know how to integrate a function like sine squared x. We know how to integrate that. But what mathematicians can't do is integrate into normal society. <laughs> That's one of those unsolvable problems. This joke is the mode. <laughs> if you still haven't got it, there's no hope for you. I'm sorry. Uh, I'd like to end this evening by telling you quite an endearing story that I think that it proves that mathematicians can be funny. It concerns two mathematical undergraduates in the 70s called David A. Cox and Stephen Zucker. Now, when they met as undergraduates, they knew that one day they had to collaborate on a paper. And sure enough, as postgraduates, they delivered on this promise. They came up with an algorithm in, uh, in pure maths, 
really obscure stuff to do with group theory. Anyway, instead of the word algorithm, it's quite a clunky word. They decided to use the word machine because that's kind of what an algorithm is, it's a machine. So for that reason, I'm delighted to be able to tell you there's genuinely a thing in maths called the Cox-Zucker machine. <laughs> and I think that makes the world a better place. Um, sorry to go off on a tangent. <laughs> Thank you.